Well, welcome to the video companion for chapter one of Head First JavaScript Programming. And in these video companions, what we're doing is we're just doing a fly through of the chapter. We want to get you started. We want to point out some of the high points along the way in the chapter and talk about some of the things you should be trying to take away from this chapter as you read it. Now, the title of chapter one, Getting Your Feet Wet, really says everything about this chapter, which is that what we're trying to do here is get a feel for JavaScript in this chapter. We're not going to walk away from this chapter knowing every little detail about some aspect of JavaScript. We would just want to get grounded in JavaScript, almost as if we were learning it by osmosis. So we're going to spend time on quite a few different things in this chapter. We're going to look at JavaScript and how it really fits into the browser ecosystem. What's its relationship to HTML and CSS? And what exactly is it doing with respect to them? We're also going to look a little bit at how JavaScript is loaded in the browser. Because if you've worked with some other programming languages, well, it's a little bit different. And even if you haven't, you need to know exactly how it is being loaded into the browser and how it interacts with your page. Now, we're going to learn a lot more about the latter topic later in the book. But for now, we just want to know the basics. To do that, we're actually going to handle a few logistics, too. We're going to look at the script element and how that's used to load code into your page. We're going to do that very basically up front in the chapter. And then as we progress, we're going to look at some more advanced ways of doing that. Also along the way, too, we're going to get a feel for code. So we're going to start looking at code. And we're going to start trying to figure out what that code does. Rather than us just walking through in a reference-like way, we're going to get a feel for it by looking at it and kind of walking through and parsing it and figuring out what it does. Now, there is one thing that we need to talk about in this chapter, and that is programming, if you haven't done it before, is something that's just a little bit different than, for instance, writing HTML or styling a page. It's really about describing computation. And to do that, well, you need to be able to do a few things. You need to be able to think logically about what you're describing. You need a command of the language you're describing it in. And you need to think it through step by step how you solve a problem. That's something we're going to tackle a little bit more in chapter two. But there's a little bit of a pep talk here in this chapter that you should read carefully that just talks about the challenges of learning a programming language. Now, in the middle of the chapter, we're going to step through a lot of the basic parts of the language, how you create a statement. We're going to talk about variables and values. And we're going to talk about some syntactic rules that you need to be aware of as you're writing your programs. We're also going to walk through a few different parts of the language. For instance, how do we do things more than once in the language? And we're going to go through that in a fair bit of detail. We're also going to talk about how you make decisions and how you write code to do different things based on those decisions. Now, there's one other little logistic detail we need to take care of up front, too, and that is there's a bunch of different ways to communicate in the browser. Uh, you can use alerts. There's a way to write directly into a uh, page itself. Uh, there's a console that you can use that's used a little more for debugging, but we're going to use it early on in the book as an easy way to create output. And then there's the real way, uh, which is using the document object model, which is something we're going to get into later in the book. But we're going to make you aware of it in this chapter. And so you should take a close look at those because we're going to be using different techniques in different places to be able to do output. Now, finally, we are going to write a serious JavaScript application, believe it or not, before this chapter is over. Uh, it has to do with a familiar song you might know, and I will leave that to you to discover in the chapter. And then we're going to take that serious application, and we're actually going to walk through a lot of the basics of how you embed that in your page. And then we're going to tackle one thing in detail, and that is really the script tag. So by the time you leave this chapter, you'll know almost everything you need to know about that script tag. That's about the only thing we're going to cover completely like that in Chapter 1. Again, the idea is to get the gist of JavaScript in this chapter. And finally, we managed to land an interview with JavaScript itself. And we highly encourage you to sit back at the end of this chapter, relax, and read this interview. <laughs>